Hi, I'm Christian Posta, the Global Field CTO at Solo.io. We work to help build, secure, and run Agentic Systems. Today, I'm going to talk to you about kagent.dev. Kagent is a agent framework that runs nicely on Kubernetes, following cube native patterns like declarative configuration. But before we get into the details of Kagent, let's talk about what an AI agent is and how you would build one. Some of the core components for agents are things like the system prompt. So this, so the system prompt is a text-based natural language explanation of what the agent is supposed to do. So for example, on Kubernetes, if you're going to build a, a Kubernetes agent, you would say, hey, you're a Kubernetes agent. You understand Kubernetes. You understand how to debug issues by looking at pods and logs and events. And you know you can call the Kube API with these tools. So in a system prompt like that, we would also need to co-locate it with actual tools. And these tools allow the agent to call out to the Kube API, for example, to get the logs from a pod or to get the events from the Kubernetes API. Now, you also could have things like memory or rag, which give the agent access to previously answered questions. So if maybe it's gone through a, a scenario before and it turns out positively, it can store it off to the side and it can recall it if it needs to. Or rag, where the agent can go look in some sort of reference database or uh, pull up maybe existing customer tickets or issues or documentation for it to, um, to have more recent knowledge when it talks to the AI model. Now, these things, the system prompt and the tools are where most folks are going to start by building agents. We can add in memory and, and rag to optimize things, but this is where most folks are going to start. And if you're going to build AI agents and really what you need is a, uh, a text prompt and a list of tools, does that really need to be written in some imperative programming language? Probably not. And the, uh, the folks that we work with that deploy their platforms on Kubernetes, they prefer a GitOps-based workflow built around declarative configuration. And what declarative configuration is, is a, a, a statement of intent of what the system is supposed to look like. And then you have a set of controllers you know, Kubernetes controllers that read that intention and then go make that state, you know, the, the valid state. So in kagent, what that means is when we define an agent, so we have a custom resource called agent, we specify the system prompt and we specify a list of tools. Now, if you look at the kagent project, we, you'll see that we have tools out of the box for things like talking to the Kubernetes API, for talking to Argo CD or Argo rollouts, for talking or, or that understands how to interact with, uh, with Istio, with Prometheus, and, and so on, and, and a few others. But the interesting bit is that um, with the MCP protocol or, or the model context protocol, that extends the reach for tools to anything that, uh, that talks MCP. So if you look up MCP servers, you'll find things like uh, talking to uh, databases, talking to the file system, talking to GitHub, and you can just pull those in and give your agent access to all of those, uh, all of those other tools. Now, one thing that we've noticed is that when you're building agents, you want to keep the system prompt uh, very focused, very tight, uh, and you want to give it access to maybe uh, you know 20, 20 or so tools, maybe 20, 25, something like that. And so if that's the case, what, what you end up doing is building agents that are very focused on solving specific tasks. So let me give you an example. If you go to uh, an, an install K agent, what you'll see is we have a uh, Kubernetes-specific uh, agent. You could also 
build one that understands and uh, interacts with uh, Git, GitHub, but uh, maybe understands the concepts around GitOps. Or um, we ha also have an Istio agent out of the box. Now these agents, what you'll notice in, uh, in, in KAgent is that they have access to very specific tools calling out to, uh, to the Istio CTL um, or being able to create YAML that is very Istio specific and, and so on for each of these agents. But what you'll what you also notice is that you'll start to use these agents to do very powerful things like maybe doing a rollout uh, or a promotion across different environments or something like uh, uh, debugging. And this, this agent is more of a workflow type agent. And this agent might need to use and call out to the various uh, other task agents. So this, this layer right here is uh, our task layer of agents. This up here is our workflow layer of agents. Um, and these agents together can uh, accomplish some specific goal. Now, we talked about MCP over here for being able to communicate out with various tools. This protocol right here is where the A to A protocol lives, the agent to agent protocol uh, that, that Google announced a little while back. And so the, these agents, when they communicate with each other, will be communicating over the A to A protocol. Now this is an RPC style protocol. It does happen um, over HTTP. And so when agents are talking with other agents, questions around security, observability, uh, governance, these all start to crop up. And that's where a, a solution like the agent gateway that we've built in open source here at Solo comes into the picture. Um, and you can check that out in a, in a different video. But so that's kagent.dev. It is a Kubernetes-friendly agent framework. It is built on top of uh, uh, Autogen from Microsoft, but that's sort of an implementation de detail. But it fits in very nicely with a cube-based workflow, usually declarative configuration and, uh, and GitOps. So go check it out and uh, let us know how you, um, how you find it.